Chris and I are very lucky in that we get to travel around and test a lot of kit, but most of our time is actually spent in commercial meetings and marketing meetings, where at the moment we're talking a lot about full frame mirrorless systems. Now, a lot of the systems that are available currently have come out quite recently. So there aren't that many lenses available. You need to use adapters to get a full kit really. Now, there is one set that has been out quite a while, which is Sony. And so we decided to come up to the Norwich store head out into Norfolk for a few days and see if you can really go native with the Sony system. We said this to Sony, so they sent us some kit. Oh, wow, that is a lot of lenses. It is a lot of lenses. I'm slightly worried about this table. I'm slightly concerned about everything. The table, just packing these away again. Yeah, I mean, it took us a while to get all of this up here. Um, we got these delivered yesterday morning. I wasn't aware of exactly what Sony was sending. So this is the first time we've got everything out. Yeah. Um, there's 27 lenses including a fisheye converter, a teleconverter, and uh, the lens that's on the camera that's filming right now. So we've got a mix of G Master. Yeah, which is their like top of the range It glass. is indeed. We've got normal FE lenses as well, which are built for full frame, but they're not the same quality as G Master. Still very nice though. They're often smaller as well. Though. Often smaller, which means there is a size advantage. So for example, this, this is a 55mm 1.8. So it makes a great little travel kit with like an A7R 3, A7 III, that sort of thing. Yeah. We've also got an A9, an A7R 3 You're shooting on an A7S? Yes, Mark II, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got the full Sony works here. Um, so we're gonna head up to the coast. We're hoping the blinding light that's probably creating a massive highlight spot on my head at the moment. I think it's quite noticeable for them. Yeah. I can't um, see anything. <laughs> Yeah, well, we can't see the camera. Hopefully we're looking the right direction. Uh, we're going to head up to the coast now. Uh, hopefully the light will soften up there. We're hoping to get a little bit of a sunset and use a few of these lenses. I doubt we're going to run out. That's definitely not going to be a problem. So we're at Chroma now. Um, this is the pier, which unfortunately is a bit scaffoldy. Um, the tide is also in, so it doesn't give us much beach. Uh, but hopefully, I do have an 82mm ND1000 uh, and this is the 16-35-2.8 which is an 82mm so hopefully long exposure will save us. Just seeing these steps over here that are getting battered by the waves so <laughs> trying to set up sort of a more interesting long exposure I'm going to see if I can get the water hitting those steps because they're sort of seaweed encrusted and stuff. We've moved up now along the promenade a little bit so it's a nice pastel coloured beach hut and I'm losing the colour a little bit, but I'm shooting into the sun. I've got the 1635GM on, that does have quite good colour reproduction. I can just saturate it a little bit in post and hopefully bring some of those pastel pinks out that some of these beach huts have. I've switched over to the 100 to 400 now on the A9. We're looking along this long piece of beach and we've got a couple of silhouetted figures right at the end of the beach. Now we can barely see them, but with that 100, 400, we can really create a sense of depth, get nice and low, you really get that sense of depth in the image. I've stuck on the converter now so I can get a little bit closer. The sun's getting lower so the silhouettes are getting better. I've been able to get in nice and close. I've come down to see a little bit more to make use of that, that depth, really pull in some of the shimmering that's coming onto the sea now. And now they've just started paddle boarding. It's great times. And also, stabiliser on this, fantastic, because otherwise I wouldn't be doing this handheld. And you need to be doing it handheld because they're moving about all the time. A lovely, sweet, slightly older than us couple have started walking along the sand together. In fact, they're now taking selfies, which I wasn't expecting. This is the A7R 3 with the 100-400. Those people are so far away now, and it's still doing uh, face autofocus. <laughs> Ugh, I love using this kit. And I've never, ever seen the sunset like that. That was incredible. Look at the fire that's still in the sky now. We're going to head back now. The, actually, the temperature has just dropped massively now the sun's gone below. It's weird, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like the sun heats the earth. Um, but I'm going to possibly just do a couple more long exposures whilst we've got this little bit of purpleness in the sky as we sink into blue hour. And then we're going to head back, get our batteries charged and get ready for sunrise tomorrow. And we're on the furthest east point of the UK. So sunrise is at like 4 a.m. <gasps> So this morning we've got up for sunrise and we've come down to Thurn Mill, which you can see behind me there, that stunning windmill. Um, it's very foggy, so we're just setting up, trying to get a good composition when the light does burn this off slightly and we can see what we're doing. I'm going to just quickly swap the 1635 for a 50mm 14 I have in here. Um, not your standard lamp. 
landscape lens, but it should just throw out these, um, these grass a little bit because this, particularly like things like this, it's very distracting and this sort of light comes through too much and when other things are really fogged out, I want that gone. When you have clickless here, some of the lenses have that in the G Master range, it means you can just get that nice smooth run through the light rather than having jumps in between each stop of aperture, which is obviously better for Chris. So changing over to the 90mm macro now. This is an FE mount again, so it's a full frame, but it's not a G Master. What I love about macro lenses, especially longer macro lenses, so like this is a 90mm, obviously you get 100mm, things like that, is that you can sort of go from taking a picture really close up of a flower to getting a nice silhouette that we just got against the sun there to turn around and be like, oh, there's better light on the windmill, I'll take another picture of that. And it's always, macro lenses just always seem to have a really nice quality about them. We've headed up to Blakeney Point where we're joining Ptarmigan Boat Tours. We're going to head down the estuary, got a load of lenses with us and we're going to hope to see some nice seals basking in the sun. We've been told that the visibility is pretty good, which is exciting. Um, apparently half the trip we'll spend going into the wind, half of it will be going away from the wind, so it might get a bit splashy at points, but I think we've got some lens wipes and things like that with us, so it should be okay. This building on the shore, um, our skipper has just told us that it used to be the RNLI lifeboat house and that the uh, boat behind us, which looks like it's got a shed on it basically, was the old lifeboat, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we're just speeding along now, and Mike and Terry, who are our skippers for today, um, have pointed out that this part of the beach has some birds on, so we've got the 100 to 400 on with the extender. Because of the intense movement, I've actually put it in manual focus, which might seem a bit odd, but when you've got it in continuous focus with this sort of movement, it's so jumpy. It, for me, it's just, it's not going to lock onto anything that's, you know, too far away. So with the 100-400, manual focus is so easy. I was using it last night for the sunset. Because of how your hand sits, you can just move your finger like this super quickly. It just means it's, it's effortless, really. Look at them just basking away. This one here is having a right good time. Okay, so our skipper is very nicely taking us just back and forth in front of these seals. Honestly, I'm not getting off the 100 to 400. It's very hard to remember to compose when you're looking at them like that. They've got, seals have such um, emotional faces that you just want to sort of zoom in, just look at the eyes, but actually you have to remember to actually compose a shot. We've got, um, some really nice sailing boats coming out now and as we're sort of looking into the sun a bit we've got that shimmer coming off the sea with the 100 to 400 we're quite low in this boat so we can get that nice shimmer off the ocean and just pick up those sailing boats we're heading back into the harbour now as you can see it's just as windy as it has been the rest of the time um, in fact this is the sort of smoother bit of water we've been on i've sort of stuck with the 100 to 400 with the 1.4 times tele converter which has been awesome to use obviously you can get a nice bit of length I was sort of worried because obviously it's been quite rough, been up and down, looking at little birds, turns, things like that, they're moving all over the place. I didn't think I'd be able to track them effectively, but with the IS in the lens and the body, so we've got dual image stabilisation with the A9 here, um, it's just meant I can carry on doing what I'm doing, I can track them more effectively. Chris has been using the 70 to 200 as well for handheld filming to get some closer shots of the sills, and even he was super impressed with the image stabilisation as well, which is saying something in these sort of circumstances, really. After a long day, we've made our way down to Roxham Town. We've come down to the river here and we've just put on a couple of prime lenses and we're just going to have a little explore around the boatyards here. I've got on a 35mm 2.8, the absolutely tiny little FE lens. Um, Chris, you're using the 24mm, right? One of my favourite lenses in the Sony range. I tested that a little while back and it was just stunning. So we're going to have a look around, see what we can find. The good thing is with the continuous focus on, I can put it on wide zone AF and then I've put on um, the IAF for animals and it is picking up the swans now. It's very vague, it's not obviously going dead on their eye because it's very hard to tell with different types of birds, but it's going for the head, which is really good. So they've obviously programmed 
that animal in, I guess. Um, and it's really helpful with this because it means I can get nice and close, go straight onto the head there as it moves towards me, and then I can abort really quickly before, before, it, before it bites me. Just looking back through these pictures of the swans here, um, it's so nice to have a lens that's so small that you can sort of walk around with so easily, but that is actually built for full frame and has that quality to back it up. Like this is an A7R3. If you use a bad lens on this with any imperfections, it will show so quickly. Whereas with this, obviously with that T-star coating from Zeiss, just great optics in there. And the fact that it's so small, it makes it like a truly workable walk around lens for a pro photographer who wants something to go home with that is up to their normal standard of work. I think for this composition to work, I need to be on that boat. There's people on it, do you think they mind? I think they might mind, yeah. Oh, so selfish. We could always get a boat tomorrow. What an idea. Yeah. So we've got the boat all day and we're heading out onto the broads. We headed out from Wroxham. Uh, we're coming down the broads towards Horning and up the River Ant. We've got a load of kit with us. And we're just going to potter about on the broads and see what nice stuff we can find. So here, because you don't often get to shoot wildlife with a close-up lens, um, I'm getting in nice and close with the 12 to 24. Oh, isn't he being a good little model? I've just stuck on the 135mm Prime now. Now they're a little bit closer, they trust us a little bit more. Um, it just means I can get in a little bit closer, get some nice portraits of these grey lag geese. And also it's good with these because I don't have to get them to sign a model release. So we've acquired some ducklings. Um, they're very, very cute. We've got two sets here, two mums, so it's getting a little bit feisty. Stuck on the 12 to 24, real opposite end of the scale. I'm gonna see if I can get any sort of looking down on the duckling shots here. Got a little bit of food to entice them. So we've just finished shooting on the broads on our way home. The sun's about to set. We came across a nice location with some reeds and a windmill and some clouds. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of colour, light up the clouds. I've put on the 50 mil for this because I'd, I'd like to use a prime lens. I'd like to throw out these reeds a little bit. One, if, one of them will work. If we do get colour in the... <laughs> If we do get colour in the sky, that 50 mil will be nice because you can pick out the reeds, you've got the small subject of the windmill and then you'll have the colourful big sky, which is what I love about Norfolk. You always get massive skies. So hopefully we'll get that here, but I might just change the 135 quick. Oh, Made an error of judgment. I've got the 135 on now, the 135 G Master FE 1.8. I've put it on my tripod, lengthened it to the most I can get it, put it on quite fast shutter speed and I'm just chucking it up in the air with a five second timer and getting it to take five images and just trying to compose it in the air, which is lucky I've got this type of screen where it flips down so I can see what I'm doing. Just means I can get some of that water in rather than just the reeds as the layering. Is this a normal uh, photography? Yeah, technique? yeah, yeah. We all do this. Yeah? Oh, Stop making me focus on it. <laughs> <laughs> We're really losing the sun now. It's sort of gone off this bit. It didn't last as long as I was hoping. We can still see it but it's not hitting the reeds or the water or anything, but we got some nice shots before that happened, luckily. So I've headed back to a lens I haven't used much this trip um, because I really wanted to fit in as many as possible. So this is the 100-400 G Master with a 1.4 times teleconverter. Interesting, not seen that before. No, well, that's the thing. I wanted to, you know, make sure I used everything evenly. Yeah. Um, so the good thing is when you've got massive landscapes like this, it's nice to have that reach. It's nice to have telephoto over some landscape shots. But what I'm just trying to do is there is just a tiny bit of sun left that's hitting on those reeds just in front of me. So I'm just trying to make the most of that, get a little bit out of those before we completely lose the light. We're just on our way back to the car to call it a night. But uh, we spotted a little entrance way down to the water that we hadn't seen before. So we've come down here. I've stuck on the 1224, which we luckily have with us. And we're just going to get a nice wide shot of this river, the sky, and a bit of reedage. Have you got some uh, good pictures of this shot? 
Yeah, I think so. We've been really lucky with like the weather and stuff, sunset. We've seen some really good wildlife, which is nice. Although, I think I maybe took one sh one today. Ooh, made you look. <laughs> So after a few days traveling around Norfolk with our Sony cameras and the plethora of Sony lenses that we have, we are back at the Norwich store to finally ship them away. It's almost like a weight off our shoulders, I think, quite literally. Literally, yeah. <laughs> no, we've had a great time with the lenses. We've never run out of, obviously, anything we've needed, especially in this environment. Yeah. Um, obviously, we couldn't use all of the lenses because the focal lengths do overlap. That would be ridiculous trying yeah. to use all of them. There's no reason to do that, No. Is there? What you, what's your most used lens? Oh, it's going to be the 24 to 70 f2.8. Yeah. Even outside of this project, when I shoot my Sony A7S, that is my main go-to lens. Yeah, I mean, for me, 100 400 here, but uh, favourite lens would probably be the 135G Master. That is just oh. Intensely sharp. I mean, all the Stunning. all the G Master primes are beautiful lenses. You just need yeah. to be in the right environment to be using them. That's all. Yeah, I exactly. Think. I mean, uh, like wedding photographers, yeah. portrait photographers, some of those G Masters. Ooh. Absolutely stunning. And that's the good thing about this range of lenses. No matter where you come into the system, whether you're a pro, use an A7R 3 or an A9, or you're looking at starting out with maybe an A7 III or an A7 Mark II, yeah. um, then you can pick the right lens for you. So we've got the FE range, which are a little bit less expensive, but still really good lenses. Yeah. Then you've got the ones that are with Zeiss, that Sony have made with Zeiss, and they're quite normally a little bit smaller, yeah. Um, generally around sort of more of an f4 aperture then lower down in the in the range and then you've got the g master range which is obviously costs that little bit more but you get the quality yeah and if you've never invested in a you know mirrorless system before at least with the sony systems you know you have that peace of mind knowing that you know you should never really need to adapt any lenses not now, uh, not now. i mean you, obviously you can exactly. but sony have you know such a massive range that you know yeah. should have you covered really i mean of course there's going to be lenses sort of niche lenses that other brands maybe who have been going for years and years and years and years have that yeah. sony haven't quite got to yet but we have to remember in terms of the whole photography industry it's still a you know mirrorless is still relatively new so yeah. things are still expanding but in terms of everyday photography landscape well well most wildlife you know macro all of that yeah. so there are there are lenses available and that's the point in go native really yeah 100 percent so if you need any more information on the Sony range, obviously you can pop onto the website, loads of info on there, on the blog as well, or on our YouTube channel. You can see yeah, us watch more of us. Testing uh, loads yeah, yeah. of lenses. Like are those the videos. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can give us a call, send us an email, put a comment below, and we'll try our best to get back to you with all the information that you need. But also, remember you can pop into one of our stores where you know Look, you have big there, Sony bits there. like this where you can test those lenses out. Thanks for watching. Cheers.